We are going to talk about a movie. This is gonna be a disaster. It was one of the best movies of the year. It's gonna um, go so close. <laughs> Probably one of the last movies I would ever want to see in a theater. Hello and welcome to episode 17 of 10 Years On. I am your host, Jacob Blunden, and today we are going to be looking at the two films that were released back on April 30th, 2010. But before we get there, I'd like to introduce my co-host, Taylor Robinson. How are you? I'm great, you know? Super great. <laughs> just, that sounds so just, enthusiastic. I mean, look, we've got quite a week to talk about yeah. this week, and uh, it's the first time we've actually gotten together to record in a little bit too. So yeah. it should be interesting. This should be good. It's gonna this... be. It's gonna. It's a way to welcome ourselves back to the show. <laughs> That's for sure. That's saying something. Very much looking forward to this. But uh, <laughs> well, we would be able to do this show without Al. <laughs> Other co-panelists, <laughs> Pe- oh, Nick and Peter, how are that you? Is so Touch by an angel. How oh, sweet. I, I want to say. Oh no, you go. First. You know what? Dust you off. always go first. I do. You know what? Fairness. <laughs> so that came across so bitchy. Just <laughs> it's um, been a while. We haven't seen each other. It's very true. I've missed longing into your eyes. But <laughs> seventeen episodes. Wow. Like yeah. what? Like I understand the how numbers in an ascending order works, but still, <laughs> each week I know good. <laughs> but each the fact that we've like had like a little week and a half, yeah. two week break, and then you said seventeen, I freaked out. Like I think like every, <laughs> like it'll be like the next episode will be like episode eighteen. We'll be like what? <laughs> So for like the next 10 weeks, we're just like, wait, what? Yeah. We're there? Like, I, think I think it's kind of great that after like 17 episodes, like we haven't been cancelled. So like, yeah. Every time we do this and we like actually freak out at the episode that we've gotten to, like number wise, I just play the gif in my head of just Draco Malfoy being like, I didn't know you could read. Like, <laughs> like we can count. I'm very what? proud of us and our counting abilities. All right, Numbers well, go in ascending order. <laughs> So I think what we will do is we will start with the 2010 remake, which was the number one film at the uh, box office this weekend, and that is A Nightmare on Elm Street. So we'll start with this one now. You pulled your you you pulled your first card for the year. I don't know if it was the first one, but it was a card. Yeah, of saying I'm not watching this one. No, and I, like I have seen a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I couldn't tell you if it was this one or not, but I have seen it before so i at least know like vaguely what the story is yeah. i'm just i'm not familiar with probably s- smaller details and things like that but i w- will not watch this movie again like and i just can't do it that's fair <laughs> so. that's fair well let's actually begin with the 2010 film a nightmare on elm street The spectre of a disfigured man haunts the children of the parents who murdered him, stalking and killing them in their dreams. This is a remake of the ten, twenty. Oh, this is the twenty ten remake of the nineteen eighty four classic original, A Nightmare on Elm Street. I so okay, it's a pretty yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's pretty. It gives you the vibe. Like I think something I'll touch on later is I actually don't like the design of Freddy in this movie, his face, and now seeing it a little bit more on the poster, I'm like, ah, oh, it's just I don't know. I just don't I don't like the way he looks in this. Movie. I, I don't I don't mind it. Uh, it's it definitely has the more we're going grittier. Yeah, like we're doing the the gritty reboot. Um, mm. and he looks like a burn victim. Like, like he does look. Like, and the filmmakers even said that that no, we we use CGI on him because we mm. wanted him to look like a burn victim mm. and which not. is which yeah I, I, fair. Did, which is fair enough did I, they also spoil the movie in the synopsis technically by, yeah, yeah. well like, i think like i get that we can we'll of, get to that yeah, because that's yeah, okay. part of my issue with yeah, the film yeah. but we, we can get that so. i i personally like this poster just because i think it's simple it's to the point mm. like it's not it it kind of is like a I guess it's more of like an elegant take on it where Mm. you just have your subject. Mm, It's very clean cut. It's very like, like this is the kind of poster that I like. Like it's not just a bunch of stacked characters. Well, yeah, they could have very easily gone with that like 
the slasher horror trope of like the late nineties, early two thousands, where it was just like a bunch of pretty people all yeah. doing their, yeah. their you know, like well, Jennifer Love Hewitt with her ample cleavage and then all the other faces yeah. behind. And like, this is just, and they, they could have had, they like, got the cast to do it. Like they could have had, yeah. Like but Karen they also Lutz could have everybody. very easily done, you know, the, the screen poster, which is them down the bottom and, and then him up the top. Like himself. that's, you know, they, they kind of, you're right. It's, it's iconic. Like in terms of, Hey, we've got yeah. the icon mm. character. Like it, it sells the movie. It gives oh, you sure. the movie. Cause that- I've actually never like, I've never really, I guess looked at the poster that like detailed intently yeah. before. And I'm like, Oh, mm. like the knife finger is there. Mm. Like the, the sweater hole in his sweater. Yeah. I was like, it's actually really, really well done. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, there we go. I do think it's a good poster. All right. Let's talk about this movie. Um, I had never seen it before. Oh. Um, I'd seen the original, like I, I have seen the original, uh, I've seen all of them, but I'd never seen this one. Uh, just yeah, just missed it. Uh, I guess because in 2010 I wasn't a big horror guy. I just didn't really like horror mm. films. So I I went into this knowing its reputation mm. of this is the worst of the remakes. So yeah, that's the that's the reputation it has from a lot of people is that mm, this yeah. is the worst of the the remakes of the, the Halloween like the classic the, horror remakes. like when they re, they redid Friday all the 70s the yeah because yeah, like then. Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out in 2003 and that was mm. that yeah. was pretty well that was, looked, that was like pretty well received yeah and then you had like House of Wax Friday the 13th Friday the 13th and produced by Michael Bay <laughs> yeah which was always their big selling point and I guess yeah. because at that stage Michael Bay fun was fact still... about that movie he walked out of the premiere because he didn't realise how much sex was going to be in that movie and he was disgusted <laughs> Friday the 13th by it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. they oh, had that movie was a porno so with sex I mean it. that's Friday the 13th though that's like, it that's, though yeah. like it's, it's, it's catering to that 1980s mentality of like yeah. let's Except kill a bunch of pretty people very yeah. violently after they have copious amounts of sex yeah. oh and like like, like not 1970s sex this was like 2006 <laughs> yeah that's why it walked 2006 <laughs> the decade we're yet to Ooh, experience the year it came out 2006 um, but uh, one of my big issues with this film is they the blueprints there and you could very easily they didn't adapt it mm. and that's my problem with the film is they went no we're just going to do a shot for shot remake a set, or not a shot for shot but we're going to do plot point for plot point for plot point remake and just make it feel darker and grittier and that was so yeah. funny <laughs> oh my god I think that was the scariest thing that's ever happened I really tried it's like hey remember like in like Fight Club when they talk about like putting porn and like that's what I want yeah. so it's like subliminal message you guys Something's coming. That's that's a preview of the great things to come. If you caught that, oh, um, I forgot what I was going to say. To be honest, so um, well, like you forgot what I'll say, so I'll say now. Uh, no, but I think if you like, as I were talking about with Death at a Funeral a few weeks ago, it's like I like I want to look at this as its own product, mm-hmm. and if, I think if you look at it at its own thing, it's a above average horror movie. Mm-hmm. I think compared to the original. Never going to be a good thing because yeah. the original holds its place in the annals of horror history. Is that the right word? Annals. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to go down. Um, annals of horror history. But I think because it, even though it did go shot for shot, I didn't mind it too much because I think it's kind of, it's very much catering to the people that, haven't seen the original. Yeah. All the like little tweens who are like, this will be the scariest thing ever. So I think they sort of went that direction. That definitely feels like what it is. It feels like it is a a horror film that is marketed towards the people who are old, just old enough to watch it. Yeah. So like, I think it was like MA here. It's like 15 year olds would yeah. love this as a horror film. Because you had like Kellen Lutz in it who... Awesome way. Of, like, I, I love that. Yeah, that who kind of it. got yeah. like the, the Drew Barrymore role where he was the beginning yeah. character. Yeah killed off and then as we were talking about like the fact that they hype up katie cassidy and that comes down to my big problem yeah with the that film. they hype her up to be yeah. what you think is the lead hmm. focus on her for so long and, and then, then brutally kill her and then be like so now we're going to focus on rooney nancy. mara who oh, plays nancy, nancy who's yeah. in the original is the actual main character well yeah. so the original does the same thing but yeah. it's tina it's not chris it's, yeah. it's her name's tina and they spend the first 45 minutes of the original is no, Tina's the lead. Yeah. But whenever you talk to someone and go, Nightmare on Elm Street, who's the main character? Nancy. It's Nancy. Nancy. Everyone yeah, yeah. knows Nancy. To me, 
and this is just how I would have fixed it. There's two things I would have done that would have made this a really great film, I yeah. think. One, I think you open with the parents killing him and there is the que- and you have the question of, of did he actually was deserve it? W- did he actually deserve it? That yeah. stays in the film and like is is the oh like is he is do we deserve this mm. because we lied? Like I, I think that would have been cool because instead that comes up really late and then they don't really. They go try into and use it. it as a reveal, which doesn't work. In it doesn't really work in the sense of like it's so well known already in the yeah. annals of horror that it, it you know it's almost even if you haven't watched lots of, <laughs> even if you haven't watched lots of Nightmare on Elm Street before, but you know a little bit about sort of seventies and eighties horror, you that's the idea. Oh, Freddie was killed by the parents of this this village or town, how whatever it was, mm. however long it was ago, and then he's coming back to kill the people or the he's children, descendants. Yeah. So to have that so late in this remake, it's kind of like well, we kind of, and it's the same thing with Nancy. Like, well, I kind of know Nancy's gonna be a big deal. So I yeah. think it's just because I don't know. To me, Rooney's Mara's performance, it's quite dull. I like yeah, no, like, I, 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 I think like agree. Katie Cassidy has a lot more I see his and this is how I'd fix it. You just swap the names. Yeah. She but Katie Cassidy plays Nancy. Nancy yeah. And you call her Nancy and, and you, you kill, kill Nancy yeah. after forty five minutes and people go, Wait, what you just you killed just Nancy. Yeah. It's yeah. the same thing if you do a screen remake. I, Sydney Prescott is Drew Barrymore at the start yeah. of the film. Yeah. That's how you open it. You go, yeah. this is Sydney Prescott. Yeah. Oh, we're opening with Sydney. Oh, she's dead. What? Yeah. Like, it's this shock value of, no, we just killed the main character. Anyone yeah. is. Like, I, I, that's how I would have done it. Um, yeah. But I think if you look at it as not compared to the yeah. original, people will be, people that haven't seen the original or probably may, they, kids yeah. probably might not even seen Scream. Like, yeah. You know? So I think True. if you cater it to them and they probably think, Katie Cassidy, because she was more of a well-known name at that stage. Mm. This is like Rudy Mara hadn't, like she, she, she she's really in Social that. Network later on, but yeah. she hadn't done anything. No. Like she wasn't like Rudy Mara the way she is now. Yeah. yeah. So I think that they really went for like, we'll have Katie Cassidy, we'll kill her off. It'll be a shock. And then we move on to Rudy Mara. And I think Rudy Mara is fine in this. Mm. I just, she, but I mean, so she different. has been very public about the fact that she hates that she's in this movie. Mm. And I think, when you know that she doesn't like she's in it, you can sort of see that in her performance that she's not really giving. Yeah, right, she she's 100%. not she's not a hundred percent in it. But I also think, don't think she's terrible in it. I think yeah, she's. Totally. I, I think she's trying to play a survivor or like without playing a survivor, yeah. and because she's not meant to know that she's a survivor. Like, I'll like admit, it's, that reveal in the film is like pretty when, you, when you realize yeah. that oh, you are actually all like potentially. Actually, you were yeah, like it, th- there's photo like that there is photographic evidence yeah. that he uh, sexually abused. I'm also you. very glad that they don't like show, show you. Yeah, oh, God, so like, am I. That would have been for a film that's thing. as graphic as it already is. Mm. Like it, it could have done it. it could have done it. it. Glad it did it. And yeah. that would have to me that would because I don't like I don't hate this movie. I, I'm, but that would have tipped yeah. like if they went that direction, I would have been like, that's too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I also that. do really like that they decided to do to go that angle and yeah. not just a killer. He's yeah. actually like, no, he's he, a, he, he, he's, yeah, he's yeah. a predator. And I, I, I think there is a lot about this movie that I think works. I think, and you're right, taking it as a standalone. And if we look at it as a standalone, I think there's a lot of over reliance on CGI. There's a lot of there, yeah. there's a lot of things that make that stop it from being a really good <laughs> right. a, 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 a better than average horror film. Like yeah. to me it's just a slightly lower than I, average. I don't know. Like I, I'm one of the people who really don't like this movie because it's like you said Rooney Mara was like dull in the movie. And I just found the movie really dull. Like the first forty five minutes of this film is just a whole bunch of sh- murder short films. Like there's not really much going on except for people getting killed. And I'm just like, yes, that is a staple of what a horror film should be. But you've done it for 45 minutes now and everything's their own little thing. And I was looking up the director. So I was like, oh, what else has he done? This is the only movie he's done. He's a music video director. So I was kind of like... Marcus Nispel? No, this is Samuel Samuel Bayer. 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 Yeah. Marcus Um, Nispel did Texas Chainsaw Massacre. yeah. Yeah. And, and I was starting to think, I was like, you can kind of tell that this is someone who's like, has really great visual 
ideas and things that sort of can happen in a short form sort of thing because that's why every sort of killing feels a little bit different for the first 45 or it's like yeah. good set designs good ways of showing different that is things true. It's, i think it's a great movie to look at it's, it's a great it's, movie to yeah. look at like i think the cinematography is actually quite cool and then there's creative ideas of the sets and the scenarios mm. that are in but then i was just like this movie is just different five minute scenes that mm. don't necessarily gel well together and i was just like very it was it was on but i wasn't with the movie and I just found it very dull yeah and I think that just comes down to why the other thing where I think yeah you open it with the parents Mm. you open with that okay here is the here is why he's doing this and you're questioning every time was he justified like is is there were the kids lying do they Mm. you know like is that happening and then so you get and then I think then that reveal at the end has a bit more of an impact because yeah. it's about five minutes after we find or about five ten minutes yeah. after we find out oh hey no we killed him yeah because you he know we had to kill it kids, yeah because yeah. he abused the kids and then 10 minutes later we go no he actually killed he actually did abuse us yeah. and, that, and i think that's a little too quick but it's so many jump scares in this movie as oh well. that like, too it's so just filled jump with jump scares, scares. And they just they lose their and they're very low tier jump scares to me as well they're sort of just very much like you set up this one thing just because you want to set up a jump scare afterwards. And I'm like, it just, and that's what slows down the pace a lot. Cause you're trying to fill it with so much stuff. Uh, and another thing I really don't like about this movie is the ADR or the dubbing that they've obviously done. I, I, I didn't realize that how much they CGI his face, but Robert England. And I love him in certain, sorry, not Robert, um, Jackie. Jackie, 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 Jackie. Jackie. I love him as Rorschach and, and stuff, but he, I just don't think he was, a good Freddy Krueger. So I, I don't I didn't mind like him. him. I don't mind him. I think he. I, I think he gets the. He is a very different Freddy, and I think that the yeah, going. He's not the comedic Freddy. They went. No, we're going to go horror yeah. Freddy. We're, this is this is yeah, no, a okay. straight up terrifying Freddy. And if you're not prepared for that, fair enough. Like, I, I, like I can. You yeah, know, that it's, makes sense. It's a very radically different take on Super Freddy. Super different, but dark and gritty. Yeah, and. I, I didn't mind it. I didn't. I didn't hate not it. Not two thousand and six. <laughs> Definitely not two thousand and six. When, um, when it comes to remakes of horror movies, specifically of an iconic movie like this that people are so attached to, do you think it's? What do you think the importance is in terms of the audience they're writing it for? Because we've talked about. You guys have all really hit on the True. fact that. Well, if this is for a new audience that's probably too young to have ever seen the first one and we're judging it based on its own film, but you also know that putting it out, people who love the original are also going to want something from it. Mm. What do you guys think is... Like what? Where's that middle? Where's that Mm. line? You're you're right. I kind of think the way that... uh, I guess... I suppose like you can't really look at like the crazies because the crazies wasn't super well known no but the crazies would be the kind of example of like that's how you do it yeah because they took the basis the storyline but then they went and did that and molded it differently whereas this is very much the same shot for shot just um kind of the same thing with like house of wax like that Mm -hmm. movie does has a bad reputation i personally think it's a lot of fun (laughs) it's it's a very fun campy horror but it's the same sort of thing the original this very you know like 19 no. 40s, 30s, it's there's, 50s. There's another remake of it, anyway, I think. Mm. 90s and sex, one of those, <laughs> one of those ones. Um, but they did, like, they sort of took the basis of it's a house where everyone inside is made of wax, but then they sort of took it in this other direction. So I think Nightmare on Elm Street, probably the only way to, well, not the only way, but I think if you take the idea of a serial killer murdering people in their sleep, as the basis Mm -hmm. and kind of making it its own thing. Mm. But so that you're not looking for the Nancy. So you're not looking at, yeah. If you're not looking for the Nancy and the Chris, because then that's all people are going to compare it to, you know? Um, But you sort of look at something like Halloween, like they, this, it's a sequel, but it's also, it's, it's completely its own thing. So you almost like have this as a decades later sequel. Yeah. Mm. With completely new people. Well, they did that with um, the, most recent Texas Chainsaw remake, which yeah. in fairness didn't necessarily work. No, so there's a lot of holes in the story, it but was it's a, a fresh sequel, take. Yeah, it's a sequel, it's which its is its own, own thing. thing. And if you haven't seen the original, 
you can see this yeah. without... Like Halloween, you could not see the original and see this and follow it. No. Whereas Nightmare on Elm Street is very much just like we've remade the original. Mm. Um, and also but, but also on Jackie Earl Haley, because like, this was coming off of Little Children, mm. which he was... Oh, God, yeah. Terrifying in. Wow, I forgot he was in that. Yeah. I forgot that movie. And that's, Fuck, that's, that's kind of movie. the role that got him this, because they... Billy Bob Thornton was who they wanted... <laughs> Have you guys seen Little Children? Nah. Dude, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about 2006. Dude. <laughs> but no, he, in, in, in Little Children, <laughs> in Little Children, he plays a pedophile. Yes. And he's only in like one scene. Oh, but he's fucking creepy. And he, if the scene is like he goes into a child's a, a public pool and every parent grabs their kids and... Leaves the pool and then the shot is just him in, the in a pool. giant pool by himself, and it's a case of he's been like let go from like he's not a danger. Yeah, well, it would mm. be a danger, but yeah. still. And I think that's what they were going for with this. They're like Jackie Earl Haley, terrifying character actor, playing a pedophile. Yeah, but I think the CGI and everything just it takes ruins away. it to me. Like it takes away the and horrific the, humanity the sound that mixing of his voice feels louder than everything else that's happening in the movie. Yeah. so it doesn't i know it's supposed to be in dreams but it just doesn't like when i was watching the movie i'm like it was just taking me out and i just yeah. it, it was so noticeable to the point where i was like ah, it's just not working the way so, you guys are talking about this i feel like this is the one that i have seen like okay. just okay. the little details that okay, i'm getting yeah, from you guys yeah. where it's just straight up supposed to be terrifying like yeah. not funny uh, yeah. or yeah. like this, anything this, this like, isn't played for it, comedy not at all it feels like this is the one that i saw because yeah. i remember watching it and going this is some dark and shit. this, yeah, yeah. Like, this is this easily is... the most violent one. Oh, oh easily which, like, easily like, like is, yeah. katie cassidy's death scene it's is like, fucking brutal yeah. uh, i was like i'm not great with gore and I was like, the, it's funny. The, the first half of the movie, I basically was watching it like this. Yeah. And then the second half, it really <laughs> tones down. It like really tones down. And I was yeah, like, okay, yeah, I can actually, actually yeah. like watch this. Like the, the climax is not that. Exactly. It's, it's and like the very final shot with the mother is so CGI. Oh, like okay. I need it. To, sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. I need to actually oh, just go on this. Something. No. Okay. It is a trope that is in a lot of these old school horror films that no, I fucking hate, like and the it's the ending. ending. It's the sequel yeah. ending that even the first nightmare I hated in that movie oh, because yeah. like just have an ending. Like mm. just give your movie an ending, yeah. and then I I really don't like. The first one ends the same way, it, yeah. but it's the, the mum and she, yeah, like, oh, they're still dreaming. Whereas in this one, this one's worse. Like this one's far this one's worse. worse because you know she's not dreaming because she's just come home from the hospital. Yeah, like and you know, mum gets pulled through the mirror by Freddy Krueger. But you know what's great is because and like uh, yeah. like Rooney Mara signed up, obviously signed up to a sequel when she was when she signed on to yeah. this, gotta... and technically. <laughs> That contract is still valid. Mm. Oh god! Like they'll yeah. never, they'll never, like they won't do another one. No. And if they do, <laughs> Rooney Mara sure as shit isn't signing on. <laughs> oh, no. But I kind of love Pay that, that contract technically out. she's like held by this contract contractually obliged mm. to do a sequel. Pay that shit out. You yeah. got that Rooney Mara yeah, money. You'll now, be fine. So. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, probably, definitely, this was the one you watched if because like the original ones. They're somewhat f- like the only other one that's kind of scary would be no- New Nightmare. Like mm, New yeah. Nightmare is the one that they do treat him fairly really seriously. seriously. Whereas, yeah, Freddy Krueger's always been the campy horror villain. He's See, always got the quick, witty remarks, and he's like trying. I, to be yeah, funny, that yeah. doesn't sound familiar no. at all. It sounds like a faraway land that I've never seen. So I would say, like Nick, you're not recommending. I'm it. not recommending this. No. I'm a borderline. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I, I'm kind of going. Look, it's not a good movie. But it, I don't think it deserves the reputation no. it's got. So if you like, if you just want a horror movie that's gonna entertain you for like a hundred minutes or so, like you just want something just to put on to like watch with, you know, like teenagers that want to watch something with their mates, put this on. You can, one always, ben, one, you can always turn it off. One positive I'll give: it's only ninety minutes. That's like it. it's like sure. it's quick. Maybe oh. watch the first half with Katie Cassidy and then turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Oh, God. Let's move on. The real horror movie of this the week. Oh, so, boy. The movie. I... Yeah. <laughs> Furry Vengeance. 
In the Oregon wilderness, a real estate developer's new housing subdivision faces a unique group of protesters, local woodland creatures who don't want their homes disturbed. What uh, is with that bear? I know. I'm pretty sure he's on meth. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that bear is on some hardcore meth. <laughs> Have you seen a bear on meth? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have now. Um, <laughs> that is like... Yeah. This I looks mean, like this looks like the poster for the movie. You know it what I mean? does. Like, like, this I, poster matches this movie. Talk about oh. the annals of history. Yeah? <laughs> you can say annals for this <laughs> one. Actually, <laughs> <'cause it's laughs> yeah. I, it's, uh, I it's mean, a bad poster for a terrible movie. But you know what? Poster's probably the the best thing about it. It sells the movie. I mean, like it, 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 it gives it, you it exactly, tells you exactly what, what you're gonna is. get. So at least um, there's that. And hey, the the creatures on there look more realistic. There than, than they, they do in the, the movie. movie. <laughs> <laughs> this. I just. I'm going to. Can I start? Please. Yeah. Please do. This movie is not good. Don't get me wrong. However. Oh, I was going to be like, there's a butt coming. <laughs> this is the most fun I have had with a 2010 movie yet. Because this movie is the meme before the meme was invented. <laughs> I. I had no intention of watching this movie when I watched it. I put it on. It was about 11 o'clock at night. And I was like, I'm not tired. I don't really want to do anything else. Like, I might just be productive and watch a movie for the show. And I was like, oh, Fairy Avengers is 80 minutes. Let's chuck it on. I couldn't sleep for the, the rest of the night because I was just thinking about how much joy this movie has brought my One, life. two phrases. <laughs> <laughs> I... I Everything in this movie was a creative decision. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. That sums up this movie. Yeah. Nothing was made on the fly because, it, I mean, the money they lashed out on the CGI of the animals, like you had, you, they lashed out so much money. That these animals have literal cartoonish speech bubbles when they talk to each other, not of words, but of pictures they're describing to I each other. I really One of my favorite that. things in the whole movie. <laughs> This movie had so much money thrown at it that they actually repeat certain jokes two or three times throughout the movie and you can tell those jokes were all shot on the same day <laughs> in the same location with the same extras. This movie was a time. And then I know we'll talk about it, but this has the... I know people say 22 Jump Street has the best end credit sequence in of all time. And don't get me wrong, entertaining. But we have one that is t <laughs> so much more better, which is the... It, th this was creative decision in capital letters. So Love. much more better. <sighs> Did you just say the words so much more better? Me? Yes. yes you were the only one talking, Nick. <laughs> was I? I blacked out for a second. I have no idea what happened. He's so it excited about talking about this movie. Much freaking more better than your movie. This this a freaking English lesson with Dr. Cop out over this here. This movie made me dumb. Uh, <laughs> I, I cannot believe that I had to watch this movie with my own eyes. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming this was the first time watching it. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is good. Because <laughs> it would have been really, like, I said, actually, it, it would have been, like, really bad because there's no way that I would ever, ever, ever want to, like... I would voluntarily pay. spend money on this. No. I had to. I had, yeah, I had, had to rent it from Google Play because... Surprise, surprise. <laughs> no streaming service wants to pick this up. I can't believe it. Like, I'm shocked by that, know? to be honest. To be but fair. fuck me. Like, so <sighs> Nick Nick watched this first. Yeah. And had prepared us for the, the end greatness credits. that is the final credit oh, sequence. fuck me. And I, then I watched the film <laughs> and it is just a hot mess of... <laughs> I, you can't even it's just a hot film. mess. Of it's a hot so mess. It's, just, it's let me. This it's, is. It's literally a movie where they're like, let's make Brendan Fraser look like a moron for the whole movie, and not in a way that like works for the movie. Oh, let's just oh, make no. like him as a person look like he can't act and he can't pick movies, and like it's literally just a big middle finger to <sighs> Brendan Fraser. Because it's funny, like they were saying, Steve Carell and Jim Carrey were the two actors that they. Wanted, which and you I can tell. I could have yeah. seen that it has a real Evan Almighty spin-off, like, like take off vibe. Brendan Fraser towards it. got it, and he in later years admitted that this is the one movie on his filmography that he is ashamed. of He being fired in. his agent after this movie, but 
He gets an executive producer. Yeah, he was an, he's an executive. So I'm like, one. somewhere along the way, this had to have been something you wanted to be a part of. Not just Brendan Fraser, but Ken Jeong. Oh, okay. Brooke Shields. Okay. Rob Riggle. Okay. You know what? <laughs> Brooke Shields, I kind of understand because, like, she's not, she's never been an actress known for, like, choosing, uh, like, uh, yeah, fair. The greatest projects. And I think this. I feel like she didn't have a choice for this. No. One. But, like, <laughs> to be fair, I, I'm less surprised that she's in this. Uh, compared to Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Because we know what kind of yeah. actor Brendan Fraser can be. Mm. And this was, I feel like this was kind of like the last thing he did that was a cinema release. Like I can't think of anything Probably. he's done since. Yeah. I don't Where, he know. Star, Where he was the star. Where he was the star of this movie. But as you said, he fired his agent. Yeah. I think which, so, which, how could you not? Exactly. After this movie. <laughs> and like, I think initially they wanted him to be quite like svelte and in his like mummy sort of that yeah. very. Very in attra- attractive George of the Jungle you know? sort of And he was like Nah it'll be funnier If I'm like A little bit like You know Got a muffin top and stuff So that way When he's put Into <laughs> <laughs> Juicy blue sweatpants oh boy. It'll be funny Because his They oh. <laughs> donk donk So Is like Not even You know Okay so in Like those sweatpants are Juicy with a capital They are J Riding up that crack like there, there is nothing left to the imagination. Also, you get a solid, sweet running shot of that Brendan Fraser dong in those sweatpants too. And this is a family film, by the way. Are we sure? I, I don't love that. I don't, actually, don't didn't know who this movie's for. Look for Brendan no, Fraser. I don't. As soon as so he was in, once tights, again. No. As soon as he was in those sweatpants, I was like, where's the outline of his dick? Like, show it to us. And they did. And I was like, bold strategy. You're an executive producer. You could have said, let's not put that shot in. But he went like, you know what? I've got no dignity left out this movie. Show the world my cock. All right, we'll have a conversation later. (laughs) Well, I would just like to focus on somehow the cringiest part of this whole movie, which is... Jong's assistant. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Who, who, uh, she's from the office. Who, uh, yes. Mm. She uses his uh, language with him. So let's just say, like, Ken <laughs> Jong, like, <laughs> is like self racist. Yeah. Like, he, he plays up being Asian. Yeah. But, like, but then she does it back. Yeah. And then, is... and then when they talk about Indians. Oh god, yes. And they're trying to differentiate between between Native Americans. Americans. <laughs> and oh. I looked at it and went, I like, I, like, yeah. I, don't, I don't think I could show my face in society ever again if I made like, those jokes she's on film. Like, she's lucky that she had the office because at least she's that lucky that she had... no one fucking saw this <laughs> movie. That's true. That's true. Like, Until now, I just I just sat there and went, I understand like comedies at one time were pretty racist but, but like this, this was like is, this isn't you know this was 2010 like but it it's also you know. like they're not even trying to be like suave about it no. it's just it's like not really even jokes no it's just it's just being racist, it's being racist and yeah. like <laughs> but i think they think us. they can get away with it because ken jong is it's, the one that's yeah. starting it and you're like no no doesn't make it better <laughs> can i think your favorite part was when they're in the plane and it's not flying like it's very yeah awful. i just it's looks like clearly it, the, yeah it's like still landed what is going <laughs> on um it's that big budget, I, baby. okay so <laughs> this is not a good movie this is a terrible movie absolutely god awful god, terrible Jesus. movie I, I, I don't have a but. I don't so have a but. It is a only however. Post. No. Okay. Here's my however. I was laughing at the absolute just absurdity oh, of yeah. why am I laughing at this? Like yeah. why? Like it had it managed to go to so bad. Not so bad. It's good, but so bad I can laugh at it. That's exactly how and I felt. Like, that's kind of where I was at. Yeah, and I, I didn't it. like. I don't. I will never watch this movie again. No. Like ever. But I've watched worse movies this year. Like there's there's movies in here that I didn't that I will watch. If if you put a gun to my head, I'll say I'll watch I'll watch this before I have ever watched our family wedding well, again. Lucky for you. I will <laughs> never. I I I will watch. I'd watch I will this watch over our family wedding. Yeah, I'll watch this like, over Cop Out. I Ooh, will. see now we're pushing oh. it. Out. We're oh, pushing Dr. it. Like, like what? <sighs> I'll watch this over Tooth Fairy. I, 
Like <gasps> we might have a conversation there. <laughs> um, oh, if only they put Dwayne Johnson in. A Could you imagine a street? fat Dwayne Johnson? Like, in this but that's movie. that's the thing. Like I, I, there's, I hated this movie, but it's not like there I, a I, lot of wars yeah. Coming through <laughs> after he said the rock, yeah, yeah. I just I don't know. Like I, I don't think this is the worst movie. I don't know. It's just, yeah. I, Can we talk about my favorite, most random swear word that is used in this movie? Is it? Miley yes. Cyrus. <laughs> oh, right. Cyrus. That's right. Why? Where did that come <laughs> from? And it's weird because it's like, like, was she like that prominent in 2010? I mean, I know that well, she just had the last, last song <laughs> and <laughs> she had, and Hannah Montana and I suppose. Like, yeah, but yeah. Like, it's a weird, like, <laughs> It's a weird, yeah, it's weird. Like it's, I just, I don't, cause I get that maybe they're trying to like throw that in there because she was so culturally and it's, relevant, but yeah. like coming from him in yeah, that yeah, particular yeah. scene, it's yeah. just like, he also does the hangover s- voice. Well, yeah, he does. Again, uh, halfway, uh, like towards yeah. the end, he does well, the hangover voice. Cause like, like, Kent, that's all he'll ever be. Mm. Like he can do whatever else he wants, but everyone's like, he's a hangover Mr. guy. Chow, and he's like, yeah. you won't be, Funnier, hmm. you know. I, 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 and okay, you were saying before, like, oh, how'd they get all these people? Like, he, Ken Chow, I, I, I get, I understand, you know, Hangover was not meant to be the hit that it was. So, you know, hey, I can sign on to this movie. Before, and then he had Hangover 2 the year before. The year after. Or was Hangover? Hangover 2 is next year. When did Hang- Hangover come out? Oh, nine. 2009. Oh, you're thinking 07. No, nah, yeah. Okay. So, Hangover is so only just, it's less than a year old. Okay. So like I can understand. So like and Ken Rob- Jong probably would Hangover wouldn't have been known by the time when they signed. When they were filming this, yeah. probably. And yeah. then same with you know uh, Rob Riggle. Like no one really. Rob Riggle has my favorite line in the movie. Uh, I hear the word favorite so much. So <laughs> I know. I'm just like I'm like what? Mm. Like, but what's so something like, completely different. But this this is my like this is up my wheelhouse of comedy. I love absurd shit because I like a comedy that makes people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> In this regard, and this is a very uncomfortable movie to watch, but Rob Riggle I'm uncomfortable right now. Is, <laughs> you won't say what that when I was staring got, into your eyes before. What have you got but, up your wheelhouse, Nick? Oh, I'll show you. Anyway, um, <laughs> so Rob, <laughs> Rob Riggle. <laughs> it's just been a few weeks. So this yeah. has been attention. Yeah, um, oh. He's dri- <laughs> he's driving <laughs> along in the beginning of the movie, and Rob Riggle's a businessman. Like he's you know he's smoking a cigar and. <laughs> He drives past and runs over like, I can't even remember, he runs over a bird's nest or he runs over something that an, a, a skunk gets angry at. And at the top of his voice, Robert was driving and he just goes, I do what I want and just keeps driving along. And then he throws the cigar out the window and goes, yeah, but you don't pollute and keeps driving. <laughs> Can and we just Rob- please just, can the record acknowledge, he remembered it word for word. Yeah. That's what's that's what I because all I remember. I from, love this movie. All I remember from the beginning of this movie is I was like, I, I feel I feel very uncomfortable because I'm like, it's animals. They essentially murder They're him. Killing him. <laughs> they let him fall <laughs> off a fucking cliff. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm like, with him. I'm with, I'm with, I'm uh, with Nick at nah, this point. I'm actually thinking so about it going, this funny. is just so absurd. Because it's all... It's it was again, so all, bad. Again, right? <laughs> Fuck me. It was all a creative decision. None of this would... They were on set and like, we should do this day. It's like, the, this, the set designs and stuff were too big for them to do that. Everything someone wrote on a page, everything that happens in this movie was written on a page by someone and it's just it baffles me i'm just and i'm i'm obsessed i've watched the end credits of this movie look at my eyes i'm okay. fucking okay. Wired before, right before now. we get there because <sighs> i don't think you're going to be able to contain yourself no, once we get to the credits lock that box up quick. i want to talk about a scene that had you like dying because you were laughing so hard and it's when he keeps moving rooms because the bird oh, keeps, yeah. following, oh. keeps following I actually him. thought that was when funny. the bird keeps moving to different windows in the and house the and like no, yeah. I Do remember you? the scene I'm just looking at everyone like you know what give me shit for liking the backup plan fuck all y'all <laughs> I'm not saying I like this movie. Do you remember really, when all the animals band up together and they do the scene from Braveheart? Well? There's a Braveheart scene in this movie. Peter, where, do you want to go get like some coffee yeah, or something? Uh, yeah, we'll just you know like, what? Let's just have you guys like bro out with each other. And, like we'll come back and talk about like proper movie shit. 
the Jesus. animal thought bubble has Willie, Mel Gibson as William Wallace in it. So they paid for the rights to say this one thing in Braveheart. Like, <laughs> hearing you two talk about it and seeing the joy is, like, funnier than the movie. I'm not trying to have like, I will, like, the only way I'll rewatch this is so that I can be in the room with you oh, two. Man. It's, oh. Especially if they were I may just, give this another half star just out of, me- just <laughs> pure, like, just, no, this movie's actually so it's, bad, it's fun. It's a meme. Oh, also, I've just oh, random note. Oh, yeah. more. <laughs> the jumping castle that... Someone, I can't remember who, it might be Ken Jong runs into it at the end, is a giant penis. Have you, did you, did you, <laughs> no, oh, yeah, they go, doesn't he go up, they go so up So it's it. a shaft, right? Oh, gonna, that's right. It's a shaft and the opening is like a little bulge that opens <laughs> like the tip of a penis. And he go, and I was just like, that's a penis. <laughs> in a, it's, this is in a PG rated kids movie. Nick knows so much about the penis that it scares me. Like, I mean, that's all he was looking for in this movie. Well, apparently well, between well, Brendan well, Fraser's yeah, tracks, Brent, yeah. I just wanted Brendan Fraser's cog in this movie and I got one that was this big and Ken Jeong jumps straight into it. Fuck, man. I love this movie. Oh. I now feel like the straightest man in this movie. As you should. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm not gonna lo- like okay the absolute awfulness of the puppets oh, was sorry. hilarious like and that's the thing this is an unintentional bad movie oh, like God, it's yeah. like it, there's you the how badly those puppets are designed it's hilarious so to look so at them cheap. like it's, it's just so like, cheap. this is so <laughs> this is so stupid it's so stupid it's the, the, and there's one point where the bear's like hiding in the dark and it's got yellow no, no. eyes <laughs> it has different eyes to what a bear should have <laughs> everything was a creative decision in this movie <laughs> I think these two are just done. done hey. <laughs> All we right. We start our own furry vengeance podcast. <laughs> Every week. Just Every week we you. dissect like a five minute section of the movie. <laughs> All right. I mean, you guys have to let us know if you want us to do a drunk watch long of watching. We may. Watch we, I could do that. I, I'm, I could because maybe do that. If we do that, Peter and I are going to need an abundance of alcohol <laughs> to like do. A lot of alcohol. <laughs> like so much so, alcohol. We could do, you could do us watching it and then you guys watching us watching it as two different shows. But we're all drunk for both. Wait, so they, so they watch it drunk and then we, we do a reaction. <laughs> drunk as well though, yeah. You're drunk for the reaction. <sighs> but the problem Which will just be us like cursing you out. Get like, you know, all these fuckwits. <laughs> Like, I, I, like, I feel like you would just be like, so this is why the state of our cinema is like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You think we're going to be welcomed back anytime soon? With this bullshit? And it's like, I can't believe I wasted like, 17 trying- episodes staring longingly into his. For this, for this, Nick, for this, no. Reset. <sighs> Episode 34 is the next time you're going to get anything. <laughs> Oh, oh, all right, Nick. We haven't um, even done it. Yet. I know we, we haven't, haven't even gotten to it. All right, Nick. The floor is yours. Talk about these credits. This is. Oh Jesus, we're so. Are you <laughs> so the movie ends. So you guys. <laughs> however, and this there's a tracking shot that goes all the way up to Brendan Fraser's face, and he pulls like a quizzical sort of like <laughs> face. And then you can tell it It then cuts to a, a similar shot, like ghost cuts to another shot that pulls out. The whole family are now wearing the pink sweatpants that he famously donned. And we get <laughs> to see... Blue? No, they're pink. No, they're, they're pink. pink. Hot pink. They're pink. definitely, it's, yeah. Take it from someone who no, loves actually, it. No, actually, yeah. I shouldn't have questioned that. <laughs> and then we get three minutes of a cover of Insane in the Membrane, which is like a... Insane in the Brain. Insane in the Brain. Which is a pop cover, which is sung... It's similar to almost like if Miley Cyrus would have covered it, I would assume. In which we get to see various characters and scenes throughout the movie sing along joyfully with this song. The only thing is that you can 100% tell that this was not like an on-the-fly, like, let's just catch everyone doing a quick little ditty to this song. They, When people sign contracts, they're like, so we've got this idea. <laughs> For the end credits. And they're like, okay, yeah, what is it? We've got this cover song for Insane in the Brain. Oh, I love that song. It's great. And we want you to sing and dance along. I'm only in the movie for five seconds. 
doesn't matter. It's a family thing. We're all going to do it. And it is the cringiest, most amazing thing I have ever seen. The son, who's an awful actor in this film, oh, who God. also in real so life has, has um, um, the Sarah Hyland has a restraining yeah. order against him. So apparently he's a psychopath as well. I mean, if you were in this movie at that age. Yeah, he probably, yeah, right. probably changed him. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, he's dressed up like uh, he's insane because of the fairy vengeance clause. In his <laughs> he's dressed up with his love interest in the movie as as uh, Sandy and um, John Travolta's character from Greece. Oh, you remember everything about fairy vengeance? You can't remember his character's name is Danny. Danny, Sandy, and Danny. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, they're doing a, a dance from Greece together in in the outfits. Not once in the movie, so that was a uh, that was a decision. Rob Riggle, who's killed off in the first five minutes in his car setup, is singing insane in the membrane to the camera, smiling around. They get the whole county fair. That is the end third act film. Uh, third act, but this film's made me so dumb. The third act <laughs> of this film, there's a big like county fair. It wasn't. The film. It wasn't the movie. It wasn't the movie. It was nice to have an excuse for ten seconds. <laughs> That Ken Jeong and his assistant are dancing on the stage doing very, not to add to the racial appropriations, but white people dancing on this stage with the hundred extras behind them jumping up and down to insane in the brain. I have watched this clip on YouTube, no joke, probably about 20 times since, and it's possibly... The best thing I have and seen. And now it's like completely fucked up your algorithm. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> algorithm is all very vengeance interviews and behind the scenes. And one looper video that said, where did Brendan Fraser's career go wrong? And it starts with very vengeance. vengeance. <laughs> oh, and they get also, they get Brooke Shields to oh dress up God, like that's Britney that's Spears that's from Baby One More Time. Like, I will not have you be not in the, the greatness of baby. No, she no, never no. does that in the movie. That's they not that in the movie. movie. But that's the thing that gets me about this whole end credits thing is that, no, there were choices. Like they actually made the physics. It's not they, like we were on set and someone made the they joke. They had to go to Brooke Shields and be like, so we need you to find a Britney Spears costume. Yeah. Not for anything actually having to do in with anything in the movie. Like they yeah. send up Blue Lagoon as well. They yeah. have, and they, they write at the bottom of the screen. Blue Lagoon Dude, because they understand it out no, furry. But they cross and it out furry, lagoon. furry Lagoon <laughs> mainly because like, they understand that's a whole problematic <laughs> they also <laughs> understand that six year old children have not watched the R rated sex romp that is Blue Lagoon starring Brooke Shields <laughs> fuck's sake I love this movie though hey. <laughs> I, I actually don't can't. This movie. If if we want to do a drunk watch along, I will do it right now. <laughs> See, the problem with that is I'll probably have to be like right on the verge of alcohol poisoning. Yeah. <laughs> to get there, you want you want to be the person like, in the stream who's just like this. The whole time. <laughs> Why am I here? I want to be so. I think that will be you I want too. To be so, wasted and trashed if we watch this again that like i will enjoy it because when i get super drunk like to a point where i just like don't care about reality anymore i laugh at everything Uh. like i'm the drunk that just laughs at everything so that's the point i would need to get to i would need to be like eight shots in let's do it let's do it like when i get when i get drunk i just become like i just angry no uh, I'm just asking. <laughs> so fucking angry. <laughs> no, I, I like I I'm like an affectionate person, oh, okay. so I just hug everybody. I get so naked like, and I can't help it as well. I know okay. it's bad. No, it's you so I'm you're gonna be this. sober while we're I guess watching I'm, so this. I guess, I'm, yeah, so I guess I'm gonna get. Yeah, you guys don't need to be drunk for this. It's a very exclusive Patreon if you want to see me. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm watch like, I'm like a with Nick. So <laughs> So guys, that is for Are we going to jump into weekend box office? I, I no. think, okay, I just Do real quick. Finish the show, yeah, right? Yeah, I just real quick. Uh, furry Vengeance, get really fucking wasted and watch this movie because it is amazing when you are just it's, shit face it's, drunk. It's I, second to me to the room as a movie that is so bad <laughs> that's good that I can watch over and over again. It's that bad. I, I yeah. <laughs> I've never seen Peter so disappointed. <laughs> I'm just like, we've watched some bad stuff. <laughs> Oh, what was number one at the box office this week? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just move on to weekend box office. <laughs> number one, Nightmare on Elm Street with $32.9 million. Number two, How to Train Your Dragon with $10.6 wow, million. still in there, nice. But that's a big gap. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it is <laughs> oh, actually. I just see what Perry Vengeance made. <laughs> Date night was $7.5 million. Oh. The backup land was $7.2 million. Ferry Vengeance was $6.6 million. Still the top five. The losers, $5.8 million. Clash of the Titans with $5.85 million. Kick Ass with $4.5 million. Death at a Funeral with $4.1 million. And Oceans with $2.5 million. Dropped off from last week, we have The Last Song, which dropped from 9th, and Alice in Wonderland, which dropped from 10th. Finally. Your nightmare is over, Taylor, with <sighs> Alice in Wonderland being the top. One nightmare in, as another one begins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's move on to major news stories. Matthew Vaughn is in talks to direct X-Men First Class. Ooh. Hey. That hey. movie that hey, that movie opens June next year. Oh, wow. A it's a mu- turnaround. It's, yeah, 13 wow. months. Huge. Turnaround. It's yeah, it's absolutely insane what they did. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is like I think this movie. is one of my favorite news stories this entire decade. Noah Baumbach is no longer directing Mr. Popper Penguins. <laughs> Holy shit. Could you imagine no Bumbucks Mr. Popper's penguins? How much of a commentary on I just upper class I'm New actually, York that would have been. I'm actually really sad we never got it because Could you imagine? I still entertain myself with yeah. like thinking of the scenario where he's like writing Madagascar to pay off lawyers and stuff. Oh, like true, that's yeah. so like going through his Jennifer Jason. Jennifer Jason. So divorce, like yeah. so like watching that mo- like I've never seen that movie, but if it was a no, Noah Baumbach movie, I would be like, I'm all over it. Yeah, how when does the, next when, year? Next year, June, right. July next I've year. Ne- I've never seen. Yeah, it. I've never seen it. That, that, was when, that was when I really just was like, I can't, I can't be bothered with Jim Carrey yeah. anymore. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. should we double feature it with Marriage Story? I think and we just should, see the yeah. juxtaposition <laughs> of what could have been. Yeah, I think. I didn't know we wrote Madagascar either. No. Maybe that's why it's kind of good. Batman Three. Is officially confirmed for July 20, 2012. Noah, uh, sorry, uh, Nolan has signed on, yep. but we don't know anything about it. So Anne or Anne Hathaway or um, Tom, Hardy. Tom Hardy have not signed on yet. Cool. So, yeah. I remember the, there was a lot of backlash when Anne Hathaway signed yeah, on. Yeah, I remember oh, that too. Yeah. People yeah. were not and excited And I was like, you know what? Yeah. You all were proved wrong with Heath Ledger. And you were all proved wrong with Anne Hathaway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, she'll never compare to... Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer, <laughs> and obviously, yes, but completely different character, and I think she did really well. a different movie. Yeah, I do think so. I, I think she's fantastic. Yeah, in she that movie. Uh, this is actually oh man, we've got some great news stories. <laughs> Seth Rogen and Chris Pine are in talks to join This Means War. McGee is confirmed to direct with uh, with Witherspoon oh. also attached. I'm glad. Wow, I love that. It's like we couldn't get Seth Rogen, so we'll get <laughs> the impossibly handsome Tom Hardy <laughs> to replace him. Like that would have been wow. a completely different movie. Wow. Yeah, it, it would have been. It would and would I it don't have with McGee directing. Would it have? I, well, but, I think I think Seth Rogen would. It would have. I think his comedy style. Yeah, they would have catered to it a little bit more. I think. Well, I, I also think they would have played up, you know, Chris Pine being a dick more than. I Probably. think that would have Maybe, been yeah. the. Because, yeah, it would have been like Chris Pine's handsome but a dick. dick. Seth Rogen is like schlubby but he's good, so Lovable, who's she going to yeah. choose? So. Yeah. Um, she probably still would have chosen. It's actually. Him. Well, yeah, I'm assuming. Although they, you never they, know. Maybe with Seth Rogen, they might have made that the. Mm. Yeah, maybe. You guys just did a Charlie's Angels a double feature as well, we which did. were also directed by Mick G. So. I'm I mean, kind of excited to watch this. I've never seen. What is it? This means war. This is war. This uh, means not means good. War. I don't not think good. it is. But anyway, mm. <laughs> love I a bit mean, of Mick G. Do you remember when he tried oh, to do you know what? drama with We, we Are fucking Marshall. talked about worst movies right now. Yeah. So this Fair means enough. war. Uh, that, okay, I, I will say that. Trust me. <laughs> this means war is. This means. This, this means, means war of furry vengeance. Go. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> um, no, nah, it definitely this means war. Well, <laughs> Alrighty. <feel> so <laughs> Peter was about to stab you. <laughs> I was like, if you say fairy vengeance, I swear to God. Because at least this means war. You've got like stuff and attractive people in it. Like Chris Pine and Tom Hardy. In that at least movie, they can. They're act. like they can actually. Like, they're next yeah. level attractive in that movie. And. I didn't watch it. The last one, Ridley Scott confirms his Alien prequel will be shot in 3D and he also confirms plans for two more prequel films. So we got two. two, So he he wanted one more. So we want one more. Well, he wants one more. He ain't getting one more. He ain't getting one more. I mean, Disney might because it's the IP, maybe, 
but I don't think it's going to be the film he wants. I don't know how much of a controversial opinion this is, but I really like Prometheus. I love Prometheus. I, like, I, like Prometheus. I, I loved Prometheus. Okay. I was dragged to it by a bunch of dudes and I didn't want to see it. Yeah. And I was the only one that left liking it. Awesome. So no, most of the people I talked to... Like, think I know that movie... It was most people. From most people but, do not like it yeah, that I talk. I'm to. one of those. Yeah, I, I, I like think it. I, I'm. I like I'm. It. It's. Beautiful. I know, dude. I know. <laughs> it is absolutely visually stunning. I just think the story it's telling is just shit. I, I didn't mind the story it told. Mm. Mm. I definitely. Charlie is a boss bitch. Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, I think the story is fun. I have a lot of fun with it. It is a beautiful movie. Mm. I also just like how freaking weird it is. Yeah. Like mm. it's just crazy. Oh, my, one of my favorite moments of going to a cinema is everyone reacting to Numi Rapace like. Oh, so oh that, yeah. Yeah. that scene, yeah. that yeah. reaction in the cinema was yeah. just like this I is great. That. Yeah. Like, I, I, I will like, say <laughs> that that was fantastic. Yeah, that, so good. Um, that's the news this week. Uh, nice. that. It's quite fascinating. Just yeah, the, the what could have been. Yeah, like like how some of those came to fruition mm. and yeah, yeah, like Matthew or they Vaughan. came to fruition. Like this things war still came to fruition. Yeah, just with a different no person. Yeah. yeah, we still got two alien movies. So mm. yeah, well, yeah. Uh, in Australian release dates, we only had one film open, and it was Iron Man Two. Because oh, we got a little early. Well, yeah. we always get we Marvel always films. get we get Marvel movies we a week early. early. We always do. Um, so this was the start oh, of it, though. Like even before it was under the Disney Marvel banner, we still got. Yeah. Early. So yeah. Iron Man two, we don't. So uh, Thor, we got early. Captain America, we didn't. We, we didn't. actually got a week late. Um, and then every other one, we got a week early until Guardians, which was a week late as well. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I only know that because I'm a nerd. Yeah, no, so, yeah. Really? <laughs> 17 I'm, weeks in, we didn't even realize you were I'm a release I'm date nerd. This whole time. <laughs> well, guys, that is this week's episode of uh, the Furry Vengeance Appreciation Podcast. Uh, uh, yes. I'm <laughs> you know what? Only half of you like it, so it's not allowed to be called that. It's the two people are wrong on this table, <laughs> and it's not us. <laughs> Thank you so much for checking out this week's episode of 10 Years On. Down below, make sure you do check our links. Uh, we have our Patreon. We have our audio-only versions of this episode and all of our past episodes and all of our links to Facebook, Twitter, uh, Letterbox. Everything is down in the description below. If you are following along at home, guys, uh, the films we're watching next week are Iron Man 2, Chloe, and the Australian film I Love You Too. Until then, my name's Jacob London. Thank you so much.